Hello, this video on the bond market shows the calculation of yield to maturity, yield to call, current yield, and realized compound yield, beginning with uh, yield to maturity, which is the required rate of return on a bond, meaning that that's the rate of return that you're going to earn if you purchase the bond today and you hold it until maturity right there. And, and as you would imagine, whatever the interest rate that you're going to be receiving when you lend the money right now is going to stay fixed over the life of the bond. And that's why bonds are typically referred to as fixed income securities. In any event, that market interest rate that establishes the coupon interest rate that you're going to be receiving um, e every year until the bond matures is also going to be the cost of debt to the firm because what you call your rate of return is what the borrower is going to call their cost of debt. Now then, to calculate the yield to maturity given the price of a bond, as in this example, 1050 and this bond has five years to go, the face value of a bond by definition you already know is $1,000, and let's say the fixed coupon interest rate established today is 8%, so that annually it's going to be 8% of $1,000, or $80 every year. So to find the rate of return corresponding to it, we're going to have to solve for it in this time value of money equation right here. So whatever the rate that sets this present value of all the cash flows, the cash flows being the coupon payments of $80 and the face value of $1,000 combined to be $1,080 in the fifth and final year, whatever that rate is that will set this equal to the current price of the bond of $1,050 is the yield to maturity. So we can do it manually via trial and error, but we can also be a little more creative and use our BA2+, plus, which is what I'm I'm getting ready to show you right now. So I'm going to pop it right up. And so the first thing you want to do is second clear TVM and second clear work. So semi-annually speaking, because that's how bonds pay uh, interest. They actually pay semi-annually. So there are three bits of information that you're going to be needing. We're going to need to know the cash flows, which are going to be the coupon payments and the face value. Second, we want to know the maturity. And third, we want to know the present value of the bond, which is the price right there. So in no particular order, you put in these uh, uh, inputs right here. But we're going to do this logically. So 40 is the coupon payment, hit PMT. And 1000 is the face value, which is also the future value of the bond, because you're going to be receiving this $1,000 back at the at the end of the uh, bond's life. And then 10 is going to be the number of semi-annual periods. There you go. And then finally, 1050. All right? And you know what to do. Put in the negative in front of 1050 and then hit PV. And now you can go ahead and hit Compute I. Now be careful now. This is not the final correct answer. This is just a semi-annual rate. All rates of return must be annualized. So times 2 to annualize it and present the correct answer here. All right. And we can also use spreadsheets, which as you can see here, this is the input and these are the semi-annual equivalents. And all I did here under the semi-annual, uh, in the semi-annual column, hit equal, reference the face value, and then hit equal, reference the coupon payments multiplied by two. All right. And that's how uh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. You reference, uh, delete that real quickly. <laughs> All right. So you equal, you reference uh, the coupon payment, divide by two, because remember, this 80 is per year, so half a year is going to be half of that amount. While on the other hand, if we have five years, you're going to have to multiply that by two to get the number of semi annual periods within five years. And then finally, go ahead and hit equal and reference the current price. And that's what you do. And now you can calculate this uh, rate of return right here using the rate function, which I show you the function right here, and it's just equal rate, open parenthesis, and Excel, for good measure, is going to uh, give you a little cheat sheet right here. So the number of payments is going to be this guy right here, 10, all right, comma, uh, then the payment is going to be this, comma, and then the present value, PV, hit equal first, sorry, hit negative first, and then click on it, comma, and then finally, face value, which is this 1000 right there close parenthesis and there you go but that's not your final answer the correct and final answer is going to be click on this 340 times 2 now this is your final answer so I'm going to clear this up because we already have it right here so now let's say that uh, 
this bond suddenly is no longer selling at a premium as you can see this is a premium price why is it premium because this bond is selling at above the face value of a thousand dollars and as you can see it's um, at this premium price it uh, shows that your coupon rate is above the yield to maturity which is the current market interest rate but let's say that this bond is actually a discount bond selling uh, for for example 880 and as you can see it's now showing that the market interest rate is well above the coupon interest rate that determines how much you're getting paid every year of course if this bond is selling at par meaning selling at face value of a thousand dollars as you can see the yield to maturity is going to be identical to your coupon rate now the financial moral of this story is at any time a bond is selling at face value you will find that regardless of the maturity of the bond the bonds yield to maturity would always be the equal to the coupon interest rate so if I came out here and I type one year it's still gonna be 80 if I typed in a hundred years it's still gonna be 8% all right so anyhow so that that's uh, that's what that shows so continuing in this presentation as you can see this takes us to uh, this um, interesting concept um, on the inverse relationship between the yield um, to maturity on a bond and the price of the bond and what this is showing right here in this illustration is when interest rates go up the price of bonds go down and of course if interest rates go down the price of the bond will go up so that's the seesaw that you find yourself in here explained by this transaction right here so this is a this is you right now let's say that you are the holder of this bond that we've been playing with and this bond let's say that it's a triple a rated bond I remember it pays you coupon at the rate of eight percent which is eighty dollars every year or forty dollars every six months and remember the bond has five years until maturity now here's this other guy right over here on the right side and this guy is interested in buying a bond identical to the one that you have so he wants to buy a triple-a rated bond with five years to go but he has a choice so he could either go to the bond market right here call his broker and say hey buy me an existing bond uh, such as the one this fella here is selling which pays eighty dollars every year and has five years to mature so he could do that and he knows if he buys this bond he's gonna be receiving eighty bucks every year forty dollars every six months alternatively he could also seek out a new borrower a new triple A rated borrower who's willing who's actually paying interest at the rate of eight percent a seven percent why because right now this is the current market interest rate right now so interest rates have dropped to seven percent and the borrower for every one thousand dollars the borrower from this guy right here will pay him seven percent which is seventy dollars every year so now obviously this fellow here is gonna say you know I'd rather buy this bo existing bond because it pays eighty dollars here why would I want to buy a bond that pays me only seventy dollars but wait just a minute this guy is also hip to this news he knows that his bond is a superior bond and therefore he's gonna want to sell his bond at a premium and the question is what will that premium price be whatever the case is we know that because interest rates have dropped to seven percent the price of this guy's bond is gonna rise to what well let's find out let's go back over here to spreadsheet and uh, right over here it's gonna it's gonna go up if the if the price of this bond if the market interest rate is seven percent notice here this bond is now selling at a premium at above one thousand dollars that's the function here you already we've already learned it it's equal you type in PV you open parenthesis the rate here is this guy right here uh, comma the number of periods is this right here comma payment is a hit equal you click on this right here comma and the face value you also hit negative because they're the two sets of cash inflows and then that's how we get this uh, price right there so as you can see when interest rates go down from eight percent to seven percent in the market the price of the bond goes up if on the flip side interest rates were to go up let's say to ten point five percent right there you can see that the price of this bond goes down and therefore this inverse relationship between yield to maturity and price between interest rate and bond price that is often talked about is actually a relationship between the price of an existing bond and the current market interest rates 
Now, the next yield uh, rate of return to calculate if it applies is yield to call. Yield to call is simply the rate of return that you're going to be receiving on a callable bond, which is a bond that can be retired prior to its maturity. As in this example, let's say that this, your five-year bond, can actually be retired, can be called three years from now at the price of $1,100, called the call price. All of these are explained right here. So as you can see now, two items of information are going to change in the valuation and the calculation of the rate of return. One is, in the future, the money that you're going to be getting is not going to be $1,000, it's going to be $1,100, because now you're going to be getting 100 bucks over and above $1,000. This extra $100 reflects the risk, sorry, the uh, call premium attaching to the bond. And secondly, the number of years until the bond gets pulled out of the market is now three. It's no longer going to be five. So you're going to use three years or, in this case, six semi-annual periods in the calculation of yield, which, when you calculate it, you're going to get 9.04%, and this is going to be called yield to call. No pun intended there. And then, thirdly, is the current yield. So when you hear of the term, just simply current yield, it simply is the annual coupon payments on a bond divided by the price of the bond. It's not a very useful measure of rate of return on a bond. Nevertheless, uh, it can be calculated for what it's worth. And in this example, it comes out to be 7.62% because you're getting 80 bucks every year and the current price of the bond is 1050 This is reckoned on an annualized basis. And then finally is the realized compound yield, which is the rate of return that you're actually going to be receiving if when you pick up the coupons each semi-annual period, you reinvest them at an interest rate other than the yield to maturity on a bond. And so let's assume that when you receive your $80 every year, right, when you receive your or your $40 every six months based on this coupon of 8%, that you can be reinvesting those coupons at 7% per annum. And this is going to be called the reinvestment rate on the bond. So now, based on the data we have right here, Let's assume that right now, at this moment, this bond is selling at a discount for 920 bucks. Based on that, you, we already know we can easily solve for the yield to maturity on this bond. And that's going to come out to be 9.24. So this is the plug and play right here. But now, let's calculate RCY, the realized compound yield. There are two steps involved. In step number one, we're going to calculate the terminal value of all the cash flows. What are the cash flows? It's going to be the coupon payments of $40 every half a year for uh, 20 periods. In this case, N is 10 in this example, by the way. So semi-annually speaking, it's 20. And the reinvestment rate divided by 2, it's going to give us 3.5%. So with that, when we calculate the, this future value here and add it to the... Uh, the face value of the bond, which you also are going to be receiving upon the maturity of the bond, it's all going to come out to be 2131. I'll show you right here. All right. So clear this up, second clear TVM, second clear work. And then as you can see here, 40 is the payment, 1000 is, um, I'm, I'm sorry, let's just follow this prompt right here. So 20 is the number of periods and the reinvestment rate is 7% per annum or 3.5% every half a year so 3.5 I and then you compute future value remove this negative right here so 1131.19 is the future value of your coupon payments of $40 every half a year for 20 semi-annual periods reinvested at 3.5% to that, you're going to add plus the face value of $1,000. Don't forget, at the end, you're going to receive the face value of $1,000. So that gives us a complete terminal value of the bond of 2131.19. So the TV that you see here is simply terminal value. So I'm going to store this, store one right there. And then finally, you're going to have to calculate the rate of return associated with that terminal value. Given that the price of the bond right now is 920 and the terminal value is 2131 over a period of 20 semi-annual um, periods. 
So with that, bringing this back up right here, all right? So I'm going to hit second, clear TVM, second, clear work. So with that, I'm going to enter 920 as my PV. So move this out. So 920 with a negative is my PV. And then my terminal value at the end right here, see right here, look at the picture right here. So today, the price of this bond is 920. Now move this aside. Now at maturity, recall one, that's your future value, right? Right here at the end. And then in between, how many periods? 20 semi-annual periods. So 20 is N. And then compute the rate, which is 4.29%. All right, move this aside again. You can see it right here. But then you have to annualize times two. And there you go. So 8.58% represents the realized compound yield on a bond which in the interim when you receive your coupon payments you are reinvesting them at a defined reinvestment rate in this example 7% per annum or 3.5% on average every half a year and so this is a wrap on the calculation of the four major types of rate of return on a bond